Effective Learning and Studying Techniques. Rise and grind and welcome back to my channel. If you're new on my channel, consider subscribing to get more of my transformational content. And while you're here, hit the like button for me. Today on the channel, I'm gonna discuss a very important topic. When I was in school, I really struggled in the beginning of my freshman year. I really struggled to learn. I wasn't really understanding how to really study in school. If you don't understand what you need to know or how to study, you are gonna struggle on tests, quizzes, and exams. So I had a really hard time studying, but as time progressed, I was able to get it right, especially during grad school, where I was able to raise my grade point average to a desired level. In this video, I'm gonna cover some techniques that can help anyone to know how to study better and to learn information better. And this is more so about the mindset and approach of studying and learning information. The first thing I wanna cover, active learning. It is really about engaging in the material that is taught or materials that you actually study, whether being reading the textbook or even going over your notes. It's very important to read before you go to class attend the lectures and go over the note compare it to the textbook for it to make sense to you looking at information once doesn't mean you actually retain it or get that information this involves participating in classroom discussions taking notes asking questions when you don't understand it and even when you get into group studies it's important to really talk about the materials for it to make sense to you actively talking over the information really helps with retention rate second point is spaced repetition a lot of people in college slack off on their studying and active learning and try to cram every single thing maybe the day before an exam or a quiz and I'm guilty of that because I've done it before where I feel like I'm good on the materials. I'm just going to cram before an exam. Obviously, that wasn't the best because I could have done a lot better in the beginning of my college career. I recommend spreading out the information and the material for it to make sense because if you're not spreading it out, it's going to be a lot of information to cram the day before the exam. That's why a lot of people pull all-nighters and try to get as much information memorized and crammed before the day of the exam. And that's not a good practice. You have to really spread out the material. You could probably look at the material at least three to four times before the actual exams on every single subject and try to make sure you understand the concepts, make sure you're able to explain it to someone when they ask you a question about it. The third point that I wanna make is creating flashcards. I always saw creating of flashcards to be time consuming. So I didn't really lean towards that aspect of studying, but I find it to be very helpful later on down the road. You have to write questions on the other side and answers on the opposite side. It really helps you with memorizing. If you try to write a question from a concept and trying to answer the question in the back and actively reviewing over time really helps you retain the information. You don't have to wait till it get close to exam time for you to start reviewing the information actively. Another technique is mind mapping. You really have to do your best to visualize the information by doing mind mapping. Try to have a graphical representation of the information that is being talked about or read about, trying to sketch or trying to draw a diagram of what that information looks like on paper is always really helpful. Another technique is teaching others. It is always helpful to teach others the information that you learn. Trying to explain concepts to them and trying to explain it in your own way really helps you retain information. It helps you cover some gaps that you missed. And even better, sometimes when you are in a position of explaining things to others, it really helps you because it makes you dive deep into the information for you to understand it properly before you even go ahead and explain it to others. So you are being forced to even learn the information and also teach the information. As you keep doing that, it really helps you with the information retention. Another concept to incorporate in studying is chunking. Chunking is really important because sometimes when we look at the information, we look at it in a broad picture. We look at a big picture and we get really overwhelmed by it, but it is important to break 
concepts down into small chunks and manageable chunks once you start breaking the information down into maybe small volumes or small concepts you get to really have time to study it and manage to really understand it another concept is practicing with problems after you have studied information by reading and going over your notes from the classroom it's always good to solve some problems from the concepts questions at the end of every chapter in your textbook and questions and problems found on the subject matter on the internet so you get to really solve some of these problems once you solve the problems you can go back and start to correct the mistakes that you make on the problems it helps to reinforce the information and even cover some of your gaps another thing is using multiple learning resources a lot of times we only rely on one thing sometimes it's only the note from the classroom or the textbook information is very accessible we have to learn to incorporate different learning resources tutoring videos are very accessible we have to also incorporate that now the concept is also the pomodoro technique and this is something that I actually covered in a previous video that I made about time management. This is how you can really manage your time when studying. The Pomodoro technique is really studying or doing work for 25 minutes and taking a five minute break in between it. And after you've done that four times, you get to take 30 minute break. If you're able to break down your study times into this method, you are able to really increase your focus and your concentration level. Another thing to know is for you to stay organized. It is important to stay organized. That is compiling your notes into folders, creating a Google Drive that has folders that have information that you need on different subjects. Keep your materials organized to avoid getting stressed later. Another thing to know is to avoid multitasking. Sometimes we believe we're multitasking and learning or doing things efficiently by multitasking, but that causes a lot of distractions. So I recommend really studying one thing at a time or one concept at a time before moving on to the next one. This really helps with increasing or improving your focus and your concentration level. Another concept is to prioritize difficult subject matter. Prioritizing these difficult materials really help you because earlier on when your mind is fresh, you are able to tackle this, avoid stressing about these subjects later, especially later on down the line when you don't have that much time to cover this material. I wish I knew that earlier because I would have done that. I used to always wait till it get close to an exam for me to look at difficult subject because I always thought I would be able to retain the information because it's so close to the exam time. But you know, that was not a good technique. One thing that we really underestimate is getting enough sleep. Getting enough sleep really keep your mind fresh when going into studying. You know, I really underestimated this, you know, during my college career because I was always sleep deprived because I'm thinking staying up all night and studying is really gonna help me cover information. But I was really not doing myself any good. My concentration level wasn't the best. So getting enough sleep between six to eight hours of sleep is really helpful. You get to really have that energy and great approach and fresh mind going into your studying. Staying hydrated and eating well. It is very underestimated, but having proper nutrition is really helpful when studying. I recommend protein because protein is a form of nutrition that sustains your energy level as opposed to, you know, eating carbs that normally give us the itis and you know the sugar rush and the sugar crash later on so i recommend incorporating protein into you know your day when studying hydration obviously we all know that water is very important staying hydrated keeps you replenished and keep you know your body in a very good state regulating your body temperature to help you focus help with your mind and brain so that it is able to you know, sustain you while studying exercising regularly is also very important it helps improve your you know your brain functions for memory and your concentration level you don't want to underestimate that keep your fitness level balanced and it really helps with your cardio especially when you need to manage your anxiety and stress level working out regularly and exercising regularly 
really helps you maintain, helps you manage your stress and your anxiety level. Another technique is joining the study groups. Incorporate this technique in your study because joining the study group really helps you cover areas that you miss. Somebody else in the group might know the concepts that you don't know and can explain it to you. It covers some of the gaps that you perhaps are missing. And also when it comes to your turn to explain information, you are really pushed and forced to learn the concept and understand it well so that you can explain it to your colleagues. And it really works because while you are taking time to revisit concepts and learning to the best of your ability, it really enforces your learning so that you can retain information and understand concepts. Taking regular breaks is very, very helpful to avoid mental fatigue. I know for me, for a fact, when I sit for a long period of time, my brain starts to get fogged and studying doesn't really get effective and I can't really study anything. When it comes to studying, setting realistic goals are very important. You don't wanna find yourself studying so many things. You get done studying and you forget information. So you have to really set realistic goals for yourself. Be reasonable when it comes to approaching studying because studying too much information really causes mental fatigue. Setting realistic goals and breaking your material up and spreading it out can really help you retain information better, remember concepts better, and in the long run, it's gonna help you do really well. Another technique that I recommend is creating acronyms of terms and concepts for you to help you remember. It is very helpful because it helps you really remember things really well. Using humor and other things that can help you remember concepts and terms and definitions can be really helpful in your studying. It is gonna help you retain information and understand concepts better. The last technique I recommend, really staying motivated. Staying motivated is what will keep you going so that you are able to have effective learning and studying. You have to have your support group. It could be family, it could be friends, it could be your study group. So you want to create an environment to motivate you. Some people use music as a way to motivate them. Classic music, some recommend that. Whatever you find to be motivating, you have to incorporate that into your studying and learning. Hope you find this to be helpful. Share this with any student that can use it. Comment at the bottom, let me know what you think. If you have any other techniques, I'll be happy to learn about it. Hit the like button for me. Subscribe if you have not already. Keep on grinding and catch you later in my next video.